Hey friends how are you hoping I will be good luck I bring you informative videos every day so you subscribe to my channel so you can find new informational videos in a timely manner and benefit from them. I hope you like my channel too so let's go to the video war used to be fairly simple. There was a campaign, the armies fought each other, and the country that lost gave up. The average person on the street barely knew that a war was going on. But then the 19th century rolled around, and bam! We had total war, as a result, entire countries, not just armies, were legitimate targets. World War II was a total war, so navies thought nothing of attacking ships carrying food even if the food was destined for civilians. The goal was to starve the enemy, disrupting public life and damaging the country as much as possible. Ten food inventions that changed the way we eat breakfast This kind of warfare quickly led to food shortages. To alleviate the problem, the UK and US governments rationed the amount of food each person could buy. Naturally, some foods disappeared from the dinner table for years, since many luxury ingredients were either impossible or hard to find, people resorted to some frankly weird substitutes which we'd barely consider eating today. Here are 10 of the best, bon appetit. 5. Potato pastry We all like to indulge our sweet tooth from time to time, and wartime folks were no different. There was a problem, though. To make the sweet things they liked to eat pies, cakes, and such they needed butter, eggs, and flour. All three had been replaced by rationed wartime substitutes. To make their ingredients go further, they filled their dough with potatoes. The British government was keen to encourage people to use potatoes because they were easy to grow. The authorities put out leaflets containing recipes for everything from the normal baked potato to the weird potato biscuits and potato pastry. 1. There were even potato piglets, an alternative to sausage rolls. Potato pastry, which was meant to be a pie pastry, usually contained margarine, flour, potato, and salt. Even simpler recipes were available for those who had basically nothing. Potato pastry could be made with just flour, salt, potato, and fat. The chef was urged to use this pastry immediately because it would become very dry if reheated. Yummy! Four National Cheddar France is home to thousands of varieties of cheese, including some international favorites like Camembert and Brie. This makes France the undisputed cheese champion of the world, however, this overshadows the equally important British cheese tradition, which gave us classics like Cheshire, Gloucester, and Cheddar. Once upon a time, British cheeses could easily have competed with French ones. But the English cheese industry collapsed in the 20th century, and its reputation went with it. What happened? Rationing, after the war started, the British government wanted to make sure that everyone could get his fair share of cheese. So they decided that only one type of cheese would be made, government cheddar. Most of the country's cheese factories were converted to make this wartime cheese. Unlike many food substitutes, this was apparently a decent replacement. Government cheese was made for years after the war, too. By the time it was discontinued, much of Britain's traditional cheesemaking industry had been wiped out. Before World War I, around 3,500 independent cheesemakers existed in the UK. By 1945, there were fewer than 100. Some classics like Wensleydale nearly went extinct. And while the British cheese industry has made a remarkable comeback since the 1990s, it's still not as varied as it once was. Three Fanta Fanta is one of the world's most popular sodas, beloved for its orange flavor and its colorful, happy style. This version was made by Coca-Cola in Italy in 1955, and it quickly became popular across Europe. But the original Fanta was made in 1940, and its story is a little darker. Coca Cola exploded in Germany during the 1930s, going from sales of 100,000 cases a year to just over 4 million by the end of the decade. The company's German branch was becoming one of its greatest success stories. But that would change with the outbreak of war, the Allies embargoed Germany, and shipments of the essential Coca-Cola syrup from America dried up, with supplies eventually running out. By this time, Coca-Cola Germany had been cut off from the main company in the US and it needed to sustain itself. In a last-ditch effort, they launched a new drink made of whey, apple fiber, and beet sugar. 
Not exactly as appetizing as Coca Cola, but in a desperate wartime Germany, it was good enough. The new drink was named Fanta, short for fantasy, the German word for imagination. The drink sold extremely well, with 3 million cases shipped in 1943. Most Germans used it for cooking because sugar was heavily rationed. It was discontinued when the war ended, which tells us just how bad it probably tasted. Two national loaf in Britain, most bread at the time was made with Canadian wheat, which had to be shipped across the Atlantic. This wheat took up cargo space that could have been used for more important things, like munitions. In 1942, the British government banned white bread outright. In its place, they introduced a new kind of bread called the national loaf. It was made mostly using wheat grown in Britain. The British wheat was less refined, which helped it go further. Parts of the plant that were usually taken out, like the bran, were left in, giving the bread a rough texture. The national loaf was so bad that the British public called it Hitler's secret weapon. The government put out propaganda to get people to like it. A rumor that the bread increased people's sex drives was almost certainly spread on purpose. For, on top of being smaller than the pre war loaves, the national loaf was gray in color and had a texture like sawdust. The crust was tough, and the bread itself was hardly ever fresh, despite this, it was much healthier than the white stuff. In fact, when the government finally reintroduced white bread eight years later, some people protested that the national loaf should be kept for health reasons. One dripping during the war, Europe and America suffered a fat shortage. This might sound like a good thing, but it was a huge problem when people were already struggling to get enough fat and calories. Most of the world's cooking fats were made in East Asia and Africa, which were inaccessible when German U boats dominated the seas. The government also needed oil to make gunpowder for weapons, so a lot of cheap fat didn't make it to the public. Everyone was so desperate that the British government had to urge people not to cook with paraffin. The usual butter on the shelves was replaced by national margarine, which most people didn't like. Fat and oil were essential in many recipes, though, so the public started saving fat wherever they could. Any fat released from a joint of meat during cooking was usually kept in a jar. This was called dripping, and it was the primary cooking fat for several years. American sausage meat took a while to catch on in wartime Britain, but people quickly noticed that the tins came with a thick layer of fat in them. Far from being put off, they treasured this fat and stored it for use in other recipes. Tinned meat became very popular as a result. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching this informational video.